Uh, for many years now, we've been using this uh, longer version of the flip cutter, which you can see here on the right, as well as a guide. Uh, that was a sort of a standard uh, guide for ACL reconstruction with some modifications for the pediatric group. Here on the left, you can see the modifications of both the guide and the flip cutter, which I'll point out. Once again, this was the standard flip cutter that many of us have used over the last several years. You can see that the upgrade in the flip cutter is, is that it is shorter by three and a half inches. I'll demonstrate the differences between these two guides and these two flip cutter versions. Uh, using the original version, one would drill into either the femur or the tibia. This is a femoral guide, so we're going to uh, state for the purpose of this discussion that it's the femur. In order to remove the guide, once the uh, drill is, the flip cutter is in place, we would need to slide this all the way out of the guide before being able to free up the guide itself and then advance the sheath up to the bone with the appropriate step off and implant that seven millimeters into the bone in order to create a stable situation. Using the newer version of this guide system and the newer version of the flip cutter, the shorter flip cutter, we can now drill through the guide, secure it in bone, and simply flip this lever and release it without having to slide the sheath back down and off. Then we can advance that in position, implant it into the cortex again with the seven millimeter step off. I'll point out a second feature of this particular guide which is also relevant. We see the ratcheting mechanism here on the guide sheath. This is in the unlocked position, so it's freely mobile within the housing. If we rotate it such that this flat surface is in this position facing this little portion of the housing, it is now locked. And I can't back it out in that position. If I want to free it up in that position, I can then rotate it in any direction other than the one facing this portion of the housing and slide it back. An additional feature of the new guide, which wasn't present in the older guide, is the length of the housing on the guide. The advantage to this longer housing is stability. Uh, it's much less likely to toggle than the older version was. And obviously we have a shorter flip cutter, which, which uh, also provides that advantage in that we're not dealing with um, a longer uh, variety flip cutter where the potential to toggle was much greater with a shorter housing and a longer flip cutter. I'm making a small puncture wound right here. Advancing the guide, I'm going to check the aperture again, make sure I'm happy with where I am. Now you do have an opportunity to use a guide pin through this sheath if you'd like. Now notice I've turned the ratcheting mechanism such that it can lock. And that gives me a very stable position. In fact, I can release my hands in this position. Now I could not have done that with the first generation guide. So I think that's an important uh, uh, facet and feature that we wouldn't have had previously. One could choose to use a narrower diameter sheath which fits into this larger diameter sheath, which I'll demonstrate here in a moment. And if you were concerned about where you were going to come out, I would use a small uh, guide pin and be certain that I was happy with the position of the guide intraarticularly and the location of the pin once it came through. But for today, we're going to simply use the flip cutter and the guide because that's really what we're trying to demonstrate. And we can see here from an external view, and notice I've got one hand on the drill and I don't have a hand on the guide right now, but I'm about to do that. And I'm going to drive in. Obviously we would be sizing the graft on the back table and selecting the appropriate flip cutter based upon that. So now that we're through, I can remove this, open it, and carefully look at the position. So here we can see the, the flip cutter in position. 
we can see the number, 10 millimeters. And now I've flipped it down. I'm looking at my grommet on the exterior view so that I can measure the socket length because that is important. And now I'll start reaming. Sometimes I'll start slowly at first to avoid any compromise of that roof. Now we're at 10, 15, 20, 5. About 28 millimeters of socket depth before I hit the metal sheath. We'll rinse this out a bit. You can see the flip cutter is now in the straight position. I've removed it and I'll place a fiber stick into that position. We'll get a passport in and grab our stitch out this portal. Okay, so we're establishing our uh, antermedial portal with the passport. The advantage, as mentioned in previous videos of this technique, is that uh, we're not likely to get involved with uh, soft tissue suture bridges. It eases the uh, passage of the graft itself as well as facilitates suture management. So at this point, what I'm going to do is um, place our tibial guide in position. So this is our, our tibial guide uh, for the pediatric age group. And you, as you can see here, the measurements are a bit different than in the adult. They run from 30 to 60. And I think we have an adult guide here just to compare it to. So the measurements here, if you look, are in the range of 45 to 75. So the advantage to going a little uh, smaller in terms of this number, obviously, is that you'll be more horizontal and you'll be able to make more of an all epiphyseal trajectory and, and avoid the uh, proximal tibial physis. The other uh, feature on this particular system is that the flip cutter or guide pin will come out just prior to the tip of the pin. So some of these uh, guides have a so-called um, tip-to-tip positioning. We, de we intentionally developed this such that the, the guide pin, or in this case the flip cutter, comes out be behind that or anterior to it on the tibia. Simple landmarks that I'm interested in. Uh, here's our posterior aspect of the anterior horn lateral meniscus, uh, the, the anterior aspect of the lateral meniscus. This is our lateral component here. Here's our medial tibial eminence, PCL all the way back here, intermeniscal ligament. So I want to be relatively closer to the medial side in general than the lateral side to, to help with the obliquity. And I'd like to be uh, sort of coming out just about at the point where I'm making that uh, uh, indentation then I'll place the guide just beyond it, just posterior to that. Now we're going to aim for that position. And you can see the flip cutter comes out just anterior to it. And if you'd like to demonstrate how we release this, we're going to unlatch the locking mechanism. And it's as simple as that. <laughs> 